So I'd like to call to order this uh, Thursday, September 2nd, 2021 meeting of the Springfield Historic Commission. Uh, in order to in, enable to enable municipal uh, in order to enable municipal government to continue its important work during COVID-19 pandemic while assuring both city employees and citizens can satisfy CDC social distancing guidelines. The city of Springfield is providing public notice or conduct a public hearing using remote technology. Copies of said petitions, text maps are may be requested by mail or phone, email or phone. Email should be directed to the Office of Planning and Economic Development at A A L L E N Alvin at SprinkleCHall.com or by calling 413-787-6020. Uh, we need to mute uh, Mr. Kelly uh, Mr. Kelly and, and uh, Mr. Bergdahl, if you could mute, we're just getting a little feedback. Okay, let me try yeah. that a little bit again. Uh, the uh, copies of the petitions, texts, and maps are requested by email or phone. Email should be directed to the Office of Planning and Economic Development at AALLEN at SpringfieldCityHall.com or by calling 413-787-6020. Uh, the, the view of the public hearing, it's focused community uh, TV website. Uh, public comment will be taken in two segments. The first public comment period will take place prior to the meeting discussion. The second public comment period will take place after the meeting, remain open for 24 hours. To provide for public comment and writing, write Springfield Historic Commission 70 Tapley Street, Springfield, or email AALLEN at SpringfieldCityHall.com. To provide for public comment by voicemail, 413 750 3223. Messages received to be played to the Historic Commission hearing or at the continued hearing date. All commenters should state your name, address, and company or organizational affiliation in addition to the items your comments pertain to. Voice messages received 24 hours before the hearing will be put into the record during the public hearing and comments after will be entered at the continued date for the hearing. Uh, voice messages are limited to two minutes. To request a reasonable accommodation or language services, please call 413-787-6020. Um, Wolf, can you recognize Commissioner Duquette? Yes, here. Oh, Commissioner Duquette. All right, Bill, nice to see you or, or hear you. Okay. And just just back to, to procedures again. The first four public hearings, uh, we'll, we'll have the hearing and then we will continue them to the next meeting to allow for public commentary. So if you were, if, if this is your first hearing, it, it, there won't be a vote tonight, there'll be a continuation. Um, so- Mr. Walsh, can we uh, move one item out of order? Okay, what would you like to move? The Environmental Review, 13 Harvard Street. Okay, I have no problem with that. Any other commissioners have any problems with the issues with that? Uh, I could take that first. Would you like to take that first? Yes, please. Okay, so we're going to move the environmental review of 13 Harvard Street, and we're going to hear that first. Uh, so here, who's here for the to uh, speak on the uh, 13 for on the environmental review? So this is Nigel. Oh. oh, several of us talking at the same time. I apologize. Okay. Nigel Grease from the Office of Housing. This yep. would be a lead abatement project that the city is sponsoring. And yep. I do believe the homeowner is online along with our colleague, uh, Maricelli from the office, who will help to interpret. Okay, excellent. So this is an application for review of projects located within national registered districts. Exterior work primarily consists of painting over loose paint to make it intact. Um, I think one of the uh, the issues we talked about in some areas of contract to make cover with aluminum material and window sills, one basement window replaced with a hopper. Okay, so what's the status of the what the repairs will be now? We're we're deferring to the commission. We defer to the commission in terms of what's allowable. Um, 
uh, my understanding is that the homeowner initially wanted to reside the whole home and, you know, that would not be uh, permissible. And so we decided we would paint and, um, and for the remainder of the, the repairs, the coverings on the windows, we would uh, again, defer to the commission. Any commissioners like to comment on this? Okay, hearing none, I will comment. The, um, it, it's not, I don't expect that it would have gotten passed with aluminum capping on any window sills. Um, it's, it's not an appropriate uh, repair for a historic property. Um, However, that you're if you're scraping and painting, that's all there was. Let me just reread this. Uh, the, the scraping and painting with the, you know lead abatement and you know licensed lead abatement people is certainly an appropriate thing to do. Are there any repairs that you expect to be made? Not on the exterior. On the interior, we might address some additional things, but okay. nothing else. Yeah. Yeah, just just exterior is all, all we're concerned with. And the reason I'm asking is because if there are, is if you find when you're scraping and painting that wood has to be replaced, then it has to be with the same material with no change in, in design or, or material. Um, I think you know that. I'm just kind of yes. putting that on the record. Sure, so, I'm happy to. So it's acceptable to the owner. I'm not sure. Do I have to wait and let some translations take place here? Perhaps it's appropriate. Okay, so I'll give you some time. Go ahead. Um, Maria, ellos están hablando de cómo van a quitar la pintura y repintarla, y están hablando de no ponerle metal a las ventanas, solamente uh, arreglarlo y cambiar la madera que esté dañada. Quítale mute. Okay. ¿Me oye ahora? Sí. ¿Cómo que metal? ¿Qué, qué? No, esas son cosas que son de, de, de ellos, que, que no podemos ah. poner. Pero está, hasta ahora lo que están hablando es de, la, de las autorizaciones. Oh, sí, sí. Está bien. Okay. Continúo. Ok. So, so, at this point, my position, my position is, although we do have to have a vote, you know, is that... We do uh, have a commissioner with a, a hand raised. I don't know if you have Mr. Commissioner right. Oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Finn. Go ahead, please. Yeah. So, Mr. Breeds, did you can you rephrase? You made a comment regarding painting over loose paint to keep it intact. Did I hear that correctly? Yes, that is that is one of the methods for deletting or lead abatement is to is to paint over loose paint to make it intact and and safe. Um, from chipping or or being uh, being loose or falling to the ground, and 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 an alternative method for for that is to cover it with aluminum wrapping, um, a window sill, for example. But but I understand that in this case that wouldn't be acceptable, and we'd be prepared not to do that. We'd be prepared to do the the painting over in the appropriate colors. I mean, and, and, but, but painting over loose paint. Or does that involve scraping loose paint or simply painting over loose paint? In, in the areas where the paint can, where, where it's flat enough to be salvaged and not scraped, because scraping can create a dangerous environment. Understood. In areas where the, where the surface can be salvaged, it would be painted over and encapsulated. Um, and in the places where that paint cannot be salvaged, where it's chipping away for real, um, we would we would scrape it down to the bare wood and get it so that that surface is flat and not in danger of uh, chipping any further and and having it be um, again one one sort of flat surface with a uniform color. Okay, thank you. Okay, and I mean this is all all lead abatement con licensed contractors doing the work. Uh, yes, that is correct. Okay. All right. Um, so my, I, I think obviously the scraping and painting under appropriate uh, lead paint, paint removal and encapsulation guidelines by licensed contractors is an appropriate thing to do. And we, and I would not 
suggest nor would I vote in favor of capping window sills or anything with aluminum. If, if that's acceptable, then I would entertain a motion that we. Uh, I believe there's also the matter of basement windows. Um, did we get a hold on? Did we get a picture of that one? Of what they were going to do? I'm not sure. I'll I'll check the file. I'm not sure if we had a picture of the basement windows or not. No, I don't. I don't. So. Uh, I'll allow me, if you would, to just jump across. Yes, please jump in. Uh, Commissioner, I'm afraid that might not be a very quick check in part because I on my cell phone and part because I, uh, I have some assistants with me who, who are, <laughs> I can who are not, not assisting quite so much. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, so the, the window is going to be, is, is it visible from a public way? It's on the side of uh, the if you're looking for it, you could see it. Yeah, is it, um, because I have, I'm not sure if you gave us information. You just said, it just says you're going to replace, maybe, it says maybe replaced with a, with a hopper. <laughs> um, you know, we would have to have more information on the window. Uh, Alvin, we could separate these two, can't we? Yes, I mean, you can give an approval for the scraping and painting. Um, yeah, that's I'm thinking we should do that. We don't have enough information to make a decision on the window. So we do have, we do have some experience with the commission um, and, and its approval of windows um, by, uh, by branch style and um, and with the with the with the understanding from previous engagements that the exterior of the window should be dark color um, is and so we, we're accepting of that rule. Okay. With that to proceed, we were to if we were to walk in and understand of or, or what we were okay, you're you're breaking up a bit, Nigel. But the, if if the window is just a big uh, vinyl, you know, eliminating a lot of the of the glass. Um, it might not be. So the hard part is we, you know, I want to be able to get you going on this scraping and painting and, and what have you. Um, I'm sure, Walsh. Well, I'm going to share my screen with the uh, Google Street View of okay. the, uh, the home. Okay. You, you can see the hopper window from Harvard Street. It's set back, but it's along the foundation line. Okay. It's right there in the corner. And it's not it's not in the front, but you can see it from the where where which one? That one right there, that right there. Yeah. What is in there now? That almost looks like it's looks like a hopper replacement window now. Yeah. Okay. So you're suggesting you put a hopper window in there with all the other dark color? If that's what's necessary, it might be difficult to source, but again, we defer to the commission as what's okay. Uh, necessary. Okay. Any commissioners have any comments on that? Please. Okay. Um, well, I, I, I want to actually move this forward. It, it, I, what does the motion have to contain, Alan? 
So in regards to scraping and painting, I don't believe that's, uh, I believe that would be a no adverse impact to the structure. Okay, that's it. Okay. The windows right. may be an adverse impact, but however, if there is an impact, you just state that and then state what your recommendations are if they, uh, if you do allow the, the approval. You, so you could say it should be a dark color or right. this okay. style or, or what have you. Okay. Uh, I'd entertain that motion if somebody would like to make it. Sir, I'm, I apologize, Commissioner. I, I apologize. Can we allow for the translation at this point before it goes to a, a motion or a vote? Say that again, Nigel. You're breaking up again a bit. Yeah, I apologize. Um, may we allow the translation at this point? Oh, yes, absolutely. I'm so sorry. Just You should just keep reminding me. Go ahead with that. Please. Thank you, Commissioner. Maria, ellos están hablando de que este, uh, para poder aprobar de la pintura, que es y, y poner pintura por encima, que uh -huh. esa parte no tiene problema, pero están hablando ahora de unas ventanas que tienen que reemplazar o cambiar y tienen que ser por el código. En eso que ellos están hablando en este momento. Ajá. Uh -huh. Ahora ya mismo van a empezar con el voto para entonces dar la permiso de empezar el trabajo. ¿Ok? Ay, está bien. Go ahead, commission. María, ponle este mute. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, so uh, we've been looking for a, a, a motion that would would that would say that there is no adverse effect relative to the scraping and painting. Uh, of 13 Harvard Street, but the, the window, I believe there is a, a potentially a minor adverse effect, which would be mitigated by an appropriate dark color. Um, and we still could separate them, but I think we can handle this boat, these, this one today. So if somebody could make that motion. Chairman Walsh, I will make a motion that the uh, Springfield Historical Commission has determined the uh, proposed scope of work at 13 Harvard Street, both scraping and painting and the replacement of that one basement window has no adverse impact on the structure um, located at 13 Harvard Street. Okay, second second. That motion. Is there any discussion on the motion? Okay, no, just no issues with the window whatsoever with anybody? Okay, hearing none. Uh, let me just take the vote. Uh, Commissioner Kroll? Yes. Commissioner Finn? Yes. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Duquette? Yeah. And Commissioner Walsh is yes. Okay. All right. You're good to go on those, on, on that. Very good. And, then, and to be clear, so that I'm walking away with a clear understanding, is there a stipulation on the color of the window or is there not? Well, there actually wasn't, and, but we would want you to consider what the proper color of the window should be. Okay. Um, so within reason, searching for, a, uh, searching for a, a vendor that can provide such at a reasonable cost, we would, we would look to do. Yes. No, that would be good. Okay. All right. Okay. Very good. Thank okay, you thank very you much, everyone. I appreciate the time. Thank you. Okay. Maria, ya lo aprobaron todo, ¿ok? Ya te puedes desconectar. Gracias. Okay, now we're moving to 228 Belmont Avenue. Okay. I'm sorry, I think there may have been an interpretation going on. Oh, interpret. Go ahead. That's okay. The, 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 as I just told her to that she can disconnect because everything is approved on this side. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. And, and please, if you translate, just don't hesitate to stop me when you need time to do it. Okay. <laughs> but, well, then, yeah, I don't want to be interrupted by anyone. <laughs> no, no. I know it needs to be done. I just don't always know what exactly what it entails. So by all That's means, okay. if you're on it doing this again, just tell me what you need and we'll take care of it. Okay. Usually I explain to everyone after the meetings, um, okay. totally in Spanish. Yep. To know, to know, to yeah. well understand. Well, thank you so, so much. No, thank you very much. Okay, uh, 228 Belmont Avenue is an application for a certificate of appropriateness to modify and re renovate rear porches. 
Okay, who's on for who, who is it here? This is I actually can't read what that says. Realty LLC, Kelnate. Sorry, K Kelney Realty. Kelney Realty. Okay. Modify, renovate, rear porches. Okay, exactly. Tell us. Talk to us. I mean, not not much is different from the last uh, meeting. The porches are pretty dilapidated. Um, they protrude out of the building, the existing building, quite a bit, making it um, unable to have parking on the property. Yeah, um, just change the design a little bit, right? Yeah, we're instead of so the way it is now is the stairs, you know, the, the decks are built yeah. and then there's almost like a square outside of that that the stairs all go down. We're just gonna reconstruct it to where the sta uh, the stairs all land inside of each deck coming down to shorten up the width um where it protrudes off the building. Okay. Any commissioners have any questions regarding this application? I just want to state that we have not received any um, public commentary on this matter. Okay, thank you. Uh, hearing none, I'd entertain a motion to accept the application for certificate of appropriate 228 Belmont Avenue to modify and re renovate the rear porches. I'll move. Is there a second? A second. Okay, any discussion on the motion? Just one question, Mr. Chair, did we have any Thing from the last meeting that uh, needed follow up or questions that, that Zach needed to bring back. Say that again. Uh, Did we have anything that the petitioner needed to you need to clarify for us from the from the previous meeting that was missing? I, I have no note here. Um, it was just a matter of uh, I think public commentary. I, I think he explained the different slight difference in the design. Um, but I've made no note on the file, so I didn't have a note. Was there anything, Alvin, that we were expecting? Any more? I don't have anything of note. Okay. I, don't either. I didn't either. I just wanted to check. No, good. That's okay. We're good. Uh, so hearing none, I'll call the vote. Uh, hearing, hearing no discussion on the motion. Um, Commissioner Kroll? Yes. Commissioner Finn? Yes. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Duquette? Yeah. And Commissioner Walsh is yes. Okay. That's, we passed. You're all, that's, that's all set. Thank you guys all for your time. Have a good uh, holiday weekend. You too. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. Okay, okay next is uh, 117 Westminster replacement of one front window. I remember this one had a few issues. Well, this is a, an application for a certificate of. Okay, who's, who is it? <laughs> okay. uh, let me try that again. It's just echoing an awful lot. Uh, it's an application for certificate of hardship, 117 Westminster. To replace the front picture window with similar materials. As this window faulty, cannot be sealed properly, and we cannot find an exact replica. Uh, they provided a picture of the the window I'd like to put in, in the area where they want to put it. I think we asked if they could consider savings the um, the well, I'll call it the leaded decorative part at the top. Um, is there anything the petitioner would like to add? Today, uh, the things are actually the same as uh, before. Uh, we will take the window and secure it and save it for future renovation if necessary. Okay, so I, I, I all right, any commissioners have any questions? Yeah, Chairman Walsh, I was not here at the last meeting. Um, I assume there were some questions around whether the window could be saved. I took a look at the photographs. I did not see any rot, although um, certainly admit that there's a lot uh, to get that window back to one, what it once was. But 
Um, has that has that option been explored, Mr. Watt? Yes, it has been. There's actually uh, new pictures that I brought to Alvin that shows uh, there are holes in the sash of the window also that it's not only taken away from the beauty of the property, but it's in very poor condition. Okay, well, I, I um, this is, a, this is, you know, one of those kind of, you know, the, the window itself is, uh, is, is that a hole that was drilled to install a cable? I have no idea. It was that way when we bought the house. Right, but th but that is not rot. It's it's a it's a simply a hole drilled through the sash. Yes. So I, I guess my question, Mr. Watt, is, you know, there's a lot of options for repair. There's epoxies. There's uh, obviously you know glazing for the window pane itself. But you mentioned that the window is not possible to be sealed, and I'm just wondering if you ever explored the option of a deadlight which is a single plane glass that could be mounted either inside the frame on the outside or inside the frame on the inside. And that would most likely solve your weather or you know, draft concerns. We have explored those conditions on the inside of the house. Uh, the trim, our beautiful old trim, I would not want to take away from the beauty. I add in a plexiglass sealer and doing the same thing on the outside would pretty much look like a storm window if I was to put a plexiglass on the outside of that window, which would be defeating the purpose of keeping it as close as possible to the historic values. Um, part of the questions that came up uh, in the last meeting were the lights. Uh, the, 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 the window that's in there now, it, it looks like it has something there, but on a closer examination, a couple of the newer pictures, you can see that it's just this strip from the glass breakage relative to like an alarm system or something like that. Um, I mean, I don't think it's an awful window. And now the top part, what, what was the, what's the status of that top part of the window? Because that would, that would be coming out as well, right? Is that what you said that you would try to restore at some time? Yes, and there's one piece. Yes, but it's in one piece. Okay. There's just a sash that's separating the top from the bottom, but the window itself is a one piece window. Right. But what there was there's not a way to salvage that top, the decorative part of that top of the window. That's what we were talking about. No, I'd have to say I'd have to say the entire window. Okay. <clears throat> there's also that has been blend to the bottom of that window. I don't know if you can see in those pictures, but they're foam on the inside and outside. Uh, well, mostly on the inside that has been glazed, trying to stop some of that air. Oops, we lost you, I think. Um, yeah. yeah, we didn't hear that last sentence. Yeah. I, oh, uh, the on the bottom of that window, you can see where there's some weather foam that has been glazed into some parts of the window to stop some of that air leak. Okay, I see. That, does, that bottom one looks like it's a tad beat up there. Um, well, Any other questions or comments from commissioners? No, hearing none. Were there any comments from the public, Alvin? No, we didn't receive any comments on this. Okay, this is an application for certificate of hardship. Um, I'd entertain a motion to accept the application for certificate of hard, hardship uh, to replace the window as with the window described at uh, 117 Westminster Street. No move. Okay. Your second. Second. 
Okay, thank you. A discussion on the motion? Chairman Walsh, did I read that the window was smaller than the window that is um, going to be replaced? I don't think I don't think so. I think we. Oh, okay. Uh, it's different, certainly. It has yeah. some lights, and the other ones don't. But, but the, the lights don't bother me too much because the other windows have some interesting lights as well. Uh, and while it's not an exact match, it's, it's something. It's the top decorative part I'd hope to, for them to be able to salvage at some time. And um, and I would I would ask the, the homeowner if, if this is approved, I'm not sure yet if it is, that to not dispose of that and, and at the potential of restoring it exists in the future if you don't destroy it. Um, but, um, you know, that's where we are right now. So we have a motion and a discussion. Any other discussion from any other commissioners? Okay, now let me call the vote to, to accept this application for certificate of hardship to replace the window. Commissioner Kroll? Yes. Commissioner Finn? No. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Duquette? Yeah. And Commissioner Walsh is going to vote yes. Um, it's just, so, all right, you've been approved to put that window in, but just from a historic perspective, I would ask you to not destroy the other one, and at some point you may be able to restore it so that your house regains that. But I think this is a, a you know, a reasonable compromise in the meantime. Thank you. Okay. Next is two fifty one two fifty seven Central Street, and this is the uh, application for certificate of appropriateness to build for the building of the single family residential structure. So here, who's here to speak on that today? I just want to state that the uh, the next two items are, are the same petitioner. Okay. However, they're, they're two different houses, but they are by the, the same petitioner. So I don't know if you want to take to hear both and then render two decisions. Um, yeah, we can do that. We can do that. Um, it, it, we just have to make sure that we've differentiated the two properties if, if there is a question about either one. So, you know, we can do, let's just do them one at a time, just to save that, the potential of that confusion. Um, so is there anything that, who's speaking for this? Who's here? For... Courtney Rose. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Courtney. How are you? I'm doing good, sir. Good. So are there any other, any changes or any other, anything else you'd like to put in front of us? Um, not really. Um, I'm just here to celebrate with my partners. Um, okay. I think um, based on what was told, we have followed, we have followed all the guidelines. So um, well, I'm right, just we, here to show appreciation. I mean, we had, had some questions about uh, did we ask for some elevations or something last meeting? There was elevation in the, uh, with the application. Okay, but I was wondering if we had asked, okay. I mean, relative to the uh, foundation height, and there were a few questions we had, in, and again, I, I don't have a note here, so I'm going to Jump, Mr. Chair, if you like, I jump in. The, the, yes, the things we talked about were the items that the, the letter that Ster, Derek Strand had presented. Oh, there yeah, um, it is. I got it. Yeah. So the foundation height, the same as the other houses on either side, that was a concern or a requested right. modification. 
Uh, the window trim and corner boards be the same width as the houses that it surrounds. The upper and lower porch rails be the same size. Uh, the spindles uh, be attached uh, beneath the upper railing and on top of the lower railing rather than to the sides. Right. The porch columns be lathed or camfered. Um, and that the other, the last request was that the window, the window and the gable be a little bit bigger. Okay. Now, it, for the petitioner, did you guys agree that these are all acceptable? I know they said they could do the foundation. Most of it, they in the corner boards and things like that. But uh, is it, is there? Okay. Is is there anybody that Courtney? Are you able to speak on the details of the construction? Um, everything within the historical district, we will follow the guidelines. Um, that's what um, we were told to do. And um, we're trying our best to make sure that everything is within accordance with the guidelines and historical districts. Okay, so your position is that, that these, uh, that these uh, items uh, raised by the Springfield Preservation Trust are acceptable to the as you move forward? Yes, sir. Okay. Are there any other questions from commissioners? Alvin, Alvin, if I could ask, how, how do we monitor that? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, like we've, we've tentatively agreed to, to adhere to some of the requests by um, the person who wrote the letter, but how, how do we... I'm sorry. You uh, guys can put we... those requests of the letter and make it a condition upon your, your decision. Okay. Okay. I mean, the, the other suggestion would be that if they do make modifications to the plans, that we get a copy of the plans with those modifications in them. Okay. That would be that would be true any true anyways, but thank you for putting that out there so uh, Mr. Rose would know. Uh, but I'd entertain a motion to accept the application of a certificate of appropriateness for the single family residence structure to be built, uh, encompassing the, uh, uh, the items uh, listed by the Springfield Historic Commission. I mean, the Springfield uh, Preservation Trust. So moved. Okay, is there a second? Second? Yes. Am I the only one breaking up here? Um, I can I'll second that. Oh, thank you. Is there any discussion on the motion? So it, is the petitioner agreeing to meet every uh, concern that the Springfield Preservation Trust had? Uh, or he did say yes. He did acknowledge that. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, it will be put in writing. And, um, we will try to acknowledge everything that is possible. Well, the problem is it's not really try at this point. It, you'll have no, to not acknowledge true. them all. Yes, sir. It's all and, if will be done. and if you can't, for some reason, you have to come back to another meeting before you do anything. Yes, sir. Okay, good. All right. Is that okay, Commissioner Finn? Yes, thank you. Satisfied with that. Some clarity on that. Okay. All right. I'm going to call the vote. Uh, Commissioner Finn? Yes. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Duquette? Yes. Commissioner Kroll? Yes. And Commissioner Walsh? Yes. Okay. We also have another house. Right. Uh, I'm going to go to that right now. And this is 271 Pine. And it's the same, it's the same it, the application for certificate of appropriateness, the single family residential with the same letter regarding it from the Springfield Preservation Trust. If there's nothing else to add from the petitioner, I'd entertain a, a motion to accept the application for a certificate of appropriateness uh, with, the, uh, with the items uh, noted by the Springfield Preservation Trust that they accept the items uh, noted by the Springfield Preservation Trust. 
I wish I could say this twice in a row. So that's moved. I need a second. I move. Second. Okay. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we call the vote. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Duquette? Yes. Commissioner Kroll? Yes. And Commissioner Finn? Yes. Commissioner Walsh is yes. Okay, Courtney, you know, you're, you're okay. Yes, sir. Uh, just if, if anything can't be done or there's going to be any change or material change to that design or whatever, you do have to let, ask, come to us and let us know. Yes, sir. Thank you guys very much. Okay, thank you. Okay, we're going to move to the new public hearings now. To those that are having a new hearing, that there will be no vote today. They will all be continued to the next meeting to allow for public commentary. This is an application for certificate of appropriate. It's at 29 Fergalade Avenue, Carmela Marzano. And uh, replace the first floor windows with same windows that were approved for second floor last year. And uh, Harvey slimline windows, no capping of exterior casings. Exterior frames will be white color. Okay. Is there anything else that uh, you'd like to add to this? No, no, we're just doing the same exact thing that we did last time, just the windows. That's it. Okay. Is Carmela with us or how is Carmela? Uh, yeah, she's right here. Just wanted to say hi. Anything hi. else you'd like to add? No, I think everything has been said. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, any commissioners have any questions for the petitioner? Okay, hearing none, then I'll entertain a motion to continue the application for certificate of appropriateness at 29 Ferglade Avenue to the meeting on the, uh, is it the 16th? Yes, the 16th. On, on the 16th. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion on the motion? Uh, hearing none, let me call the vote. Commissioner Kroll? Yes. Commissioner Finn? Yes. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Duquette? Yeah. Commissioner Walsh is yes. It's nice to see you, Carmela. We'll, we'll take this up at the next meeting after the chance for public commentary. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, next is 91 Central Street. This is an application for certificate of appropriateness, the installation of interconnected rooftop PV system panels, black on black panels. Panels would not be visible from any public way. So that's an, okay. Uh, Stacy Morris, are you on? Or someone to speak on her behalf? No? Who's here for, uh, for 91 Central Street? Uh, hi, Steve from Sun, uh, Sunrun. Yep. Do we have permission? 91 Central. Uh, we don't have a letter on file. Can you do a quick check? Let me try to call the, um, the property owner. Okay. And, and I'm going to just put this one, I'm going to back this up one, and we're going to move to 967 Fairfield. Because we can't hear that without the owner's permission to, for someone else to speak in their behalf. Uh, so do you, mean, do you mean 67 Fairfield? Oh, yeah. Sorry. 67. What did I say? <laughs> Yeah, okay. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? So this is an application for certificate of appropriateness, 67 Fairfield Street, rebuilding of gable style garage. Original is damaged and deemed a total loss to a fallen tree. Yes. Okay. 
Okay, tell us what you're what you're going to do. Just kind of describe the project. I'm looking through the papers, but describe it for us out of All right. Um, basically, a uh, big branch fell in my garage, and um, it was a total loss. So now um, I, I have to start from. I still have the um, foundation still there. Yeah. I just want to um, change it a little. Uh, I guess a couple garages in the area that has um, the second floor. Yep. to it and i wanted to make it gable style um pretty much almost just like my house the style of my house uh everything the wooden cedar shakes um the paint design that was on the old garage doors and like yep. the, the the um everything pretty much is gonna reflect the old garage except it's gonna be gable style and and um gable style have the second floor that's pretty much what so I'm all the materials all, all going to be same materials as the house. Uh, I'm not even sure what materials. Uh, the outside, like wooden cedar shakes, um, yeah. the the um windows with the grid on the outside. Um, we're just gonna have French doors or sliding doors with which will have the grids on the outside, um, as well. Um, the light fixtures, I uh, sent y'all um, some examples of some that I looked at. Um, ooh, excuse me. Okay. I'm okay. not educated enough to know like what type of wood. Yeah. What, what uh, type of wood? Well, I'm thinking just the, you know, the finished wood. Yeah, I wouldn't, there might be something in some of these papers you gave us that describes the wood as well, but um, yeah. In fact, it is. It is in here. So uh, now, what about the garage doors? How are you going to duplicate? Where, did you still have those swinging open doors? No, no, no. That's been gone. Um, when I bought the house five years ago, um, yes. I, I just recently sent them a picture of the house with the garage on the side, and it has um, the two doors that had the pink design, the uh, the same colors that's on the house, burgundy, tan, and green on it. Well, okay. no, I, I believe it's burgundy and tan. The yeah. um, garage was had a green stained cedar shakes. Um, the I want it to be one full door because I have a um, I have a large um, truck, and before I can barely get my truck, you know how cars are a little bit bigger these days. So yeah. I wanted to eliminate the the wooden post in the middle, so it would be like um, it, it's the same double garage except it won't have that um, that piece in the middle. But the doors, the um, I plan to paint the doors the same design as it was when I bought it. Uh, you should have a picture kind of similar showing you what the doors look like. Yeah, unfortunately, I have the, the, the rendering, but I don't have a, a picture of what the old doors looked like. Uh, Alvin, uh, Alvin's on the phone. I just emailed Alvin as the, um, right before the uh, okay. meeting started of the picture of the house. I don't have your email to email it to you. No, that's okay. But... He'll, put, he'll put it up here for us in a second. Uh, so, the, so the finish, I think you've got a good, a, a decent plan here. The, the finish work is to match your house in, yes. you know, in the eaves and the, the windows and um, and you know, I have a, a minor, I say, a minor concern about, uh, you know, I, are they going to let you do this without putting a new foundation in? No. Yes. The one, um, you could go, Ron. Go ahead. Hey, Ron. Yeah. So I'm Ron. So it's going to be, um, we're going to be helping them out. MAW Construction and Highway Construction Company. So yeah, we're going to end up taking the old foundation out and pouring a whole brand new one where you can put the okay, new silver well, plate I'm in. I'm happier to hear about that then. Alvin, do yeah. you have the picture? Thank you, Ron. Do you yeah. have a picture that he sent you? I'm sorry, I was trying to call the other participants. I know, I know. I just saw you cut off the phone, so. Yeah, what, what photo are you looking for? We're looking for the picture of 67 Fairfield, the, gar uh, the garage picture that he sent you today. Okay, well, let me see what I can find. Well, it's, it's the house in the garage, but you can see the garage from the well, side. Right, right, yeah, house and garage, but I just want to, yeah. I want to get us, the, I mean, we want to make sure we have as much information to allow for public commentary. That's all. That's what this is. That's why we're, you know, going through these things so that anybody can, you know, neighbors or whoever uh, can make their commentary. I want to have 
as much accurate information as possible. And, and Otto, while he's looking, do you have other, do you know where other garages similar to this are located near you? Yes. Um, I sent them a couple um, addresses and pictures of garages okay. in the neighborhood. And there's actually one, like the house right behind mine, the house yep. next to it actually um, has a second floor. Yeah, that's it right there. That's the side picture from my back fence. I got a front picture of it also. It's the um, Garfield Street um, address. Yep. Okay, what and, is that? Um, that's the neighbor? Yeah, right there. Yeah, that's it right there. That's like almost oh right behind. It's like diagonal from my house on the opposite street. Yeah. That's and a what's, zip what's your, one. The picture? Do you have a picture of his house, Alvin? No, oh, that's another one that's on Greenleaf. So that's similar to what you're building right there. That's yes, close that's to similar to what I'm building. But you're having a full door. Okay, just... The, the that's, one I, that's on Forest Park Ave. That's on yeah, the only Park one I Ave. really want to see, Alvin, is his his own house, his own garage. I mean, he sent me a bunch of photos. I don't, I'm not sure. I, what I, I, I send you one right now, Alvin. No, okay. just if you keep going through them, Alvin, because you'll get it quicker, I think. Yeah. Let me send you a new one. Let's go back. Let's see if it's there. I just want to see what you're replacing. That's all. The doors. Yeah. What doors you're replacing? Um, you know, and in this is is the. All right. One second. I know. I just sent them a new. Okay. One of the house. Let me just send them a new one. Yeah, we, we might have enough information. I just would like to see relative to what you want to do with the doors. I'd just like to see before I make a decision, which is not for two weeks, uh, is what uh, what the, those doors look like now. Commissioner Walsh, I had a question for Go the- Go ahead, panel. Commissioner Flynn, please. Ms. Mr. Bridges, you mentioned uh, putting a new foundation in. Is the yes. footprint the same or is it larger? And if so, how much? It's going to be the same. same the footing is the same. 20, 21 by 22. Yeah. So we keep, it, we keep it the same. Okay. Thank you. Alvin, I just sent it to you. Yep, I just received it. So let me try to open this. You probably have to zoom in a little bit to see okay. the garage on the side. I see. So you so you actually, the, the doors I see in the rendering, it just makes it look like, like you have three columns instead of four on each one. Okay, it's similar. And then three windows on the top instead of two. Um, okay, that's really all I was wanted to see was what it looks like now or before the tree fell on it, whichever. Yeah, right now it's just a, it's just a foundation. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm all, I'm, I've seen enough. Any com other commissioners have any other? It, it, Questions for Mr. Chamber? Hearing none, I'd entertain a motion to uh, continue the application for certificate of appropriateness at 67 Fairfield Street to the meeting on September 16th. So moved. Second. Second. A second. Okay, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, let me call the vote. Commissioner Finn? Yes. Starlin. Yes. Commissioner Duquette. Yes. Commissioner Kroll. Yes. Commissioner Walsh is yes. Okay, we'll continue that and see what we get for public commentary, and we'll see you in two weeks. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Okay. Is is Stacy Morris? I think I saw that the name come up. Yes, I'm here. I'm so sorry. That's okay. Uh, the application for certificate of appropriateness at 91 Central Street to uh, to do the uh, solar panels. Can you tell us yes. about it? Yep, go ahead. Uh, so um, we are trying to uh, basically uh, reduce the bills around our house, you know, a hardship kind of situation. So yep. um, based on uh, that, uh, we are requesting permission to get solar panels placed in to aid in that matter. Okay. 
All right, I see, you know, the, your roof pitch is actually good because it's probably not visible. It's not. The, the only concerns I would have that I, I do have is where the, the conduit and where the uh, metering and, and the, the, the uh, dis disconnect switch and things like that are going because we, should, we want them to be as minimally visible as possible. Um, I'm looking through the information here, but I don't quite see where those are going yet. Um, I believe the contractor's online, so maybe he would be able to answer that best. That would be awesome. Who, who would that be? Yeah. Hi, this is Steve Kelly. Okay, Steve, go and, ahead and talk to us. Uh, the, the biggest issue that I have with location of the equipment is the fact that two electric meters are located in the basement. So those are going to have to be relocated. Usually we put the equipment adjacent to the electric meters. Correct. So yeah. I... I am going to uh, suggest that the meters are going to go on the left of the house um, and we would minimize the amount of equipment that would go next to it, uh, probably just a shut off and try to get the inverter and other equipment in the basement. Okay. Um, we, the panels are going all the way to the back. Uh, our crews definitely do a bang up job trying to hide the conduit and we certainly wouldn't want to have the conduit coming out over that extended eave um you know in some sort of roughshod fashion uh i'm assuming um, yeah, we, i mean most of the the companies accommodate color and things like that uh there's no way that because it looks like I mean, it, obviously, it's a big square house. Um, there's no way that those can be done in the back wall. Well, the meters are going to be at the utility's discretion. I know those won't. I don't believe those will be on the back wall. Okay, um, the disconnect so has to be there. And, the, and it does have to be a disconnect. Yes. Um, we've done several of these historic uh, meetings recently, and I do know that that's a... Um, you know, hot topic, especially, you know, you put a couple of inverters and a couple of shutoffs and a utility meter, and there's quite a bit of equipment there. So, uh, you know, we're going to either put it in the basement of the house or on the rear of the house. Well, I appreciate that but, much. Go ahead. But, Sorry. you know, that, that being said, you know, there will be a couple of new meters um, and, a, and a disconnect that will be located at the utility's discretion. Okay. Hey, Alvin, have we had any luck having the utilities cons consult us before they put these meters in somewhere? No. <laughs> Mr. Chair, you I, are funny. You are a funny <laughs> man. Yeah, I thought I'd just throw a little humor into the meeting. Uh, but, you know, we the, the, the minimal minimally visible, and I think you understand that, whoever was just speaking from the solar company, uh, anything you can do to make things minimally visible. We understand that if they put meters somewhere uh, that are visible, there has to be a disconnect there, I believe. That's just a, I think that's a requirement. And then uh, but any other equipment, if, if you could put it minimally visible or in the back or in part in the basement, that would be a good goal for us. Obviously the panels are not an issue here, so it's already minimal minimally visible by from that point of view we just want to get it to the to the you know reduce it to the to the bit the best possible result um is there anything else you'd like to add no i i do think that there's an elevation showing the rear bulkhead and i'm picturing the equipment being located to the right of that bulkhead okay, let me just flip through again real quick because i do have all the pictures I appreciate the renderings because that helps a lot. Uh, you know what? I hate to say it. You may not have that picture. I I reviewed the project ahead of time. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't. I don't have it. But that's okay. You can okay. send. It to I, Alvin. I apologize. Yeah. If, if you get a chance, you send it to Alvin. Um, yeah, you know, we have to we have to take the public vote to continue this to allow for public commentary, and I think you know you've given us good rendering. We have enough information, and you know what our concerns are. So uh, 
I, I would entertain a motion to continue this application for a certificate of appropriateness at 91 Central Street, Springfield, to for installation of the interconnected rooftop PV system. So moved. Is there a second? second. Okay, thank you. Is there any discussion? Uh, hearing none, we'll call the vote. Uh, Commissioner Duquette? Yes. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Finn? Yes. Commissioner Crowell? Yes. Commissioner Walsh is yes. So let's continue to the uh, September 16th meeting to allow for. Very oh, good. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll see you then. Okay. Have a good evening. You too. Okay, next is uh, 373 Worthington Street, which is an application for certificate of hardship. Uh, Let's see, proposed changes, install air conditioning system to a portion of the space, space is leased by mental health, provide vital services. The proposed system has minimal impact to the exterior of the building it involves a small vent above the door on the Chestnut Street side of the building, which is not visible from the outside. The hardship is that the lack of air conditioning program space prevents vulnerable clients that we serve from attending the program on warm days. This challenge dramatically affects drastically affects treatment and recovery as consistency. Okay, uh, who's here to speak on this? Good evening, I'm, I'm Jeff McGarry from the Gandara Center. I'm also with Joe Martins, uh, also with the Gandara Center. Okay, thank you, go ahead, just uh, kind of- describe. Sure, so, so we, um, we've we leased the space uh, over at 373 Worthington Street for uh, a couple of years now and um, uh, have not had air conditioning in the space, which uh, as you can imagine, um, on warm days, uh, basically, we've had to shut the center down and not provide services there. Um, there's been, you know, we, we've had several uh, contractors um, look at different options. Um, and for a variety of reasons, uh, you know, we, we've arrived at one basically possible option, which is to install a, uh, a five ton uh, self contained unit in a back hallway of the space that self-contained unit would require um, a discharge and intake pipe uh, to be run to the exterior of the building, um, which we've determined the, the, the least, uh, the, the location would have the least impact to the exterior of the building would be to, to uh, vent the unit uh, under the soffit uh, on the Chestnut Street side of the building um, and would have a great two pipes, really would not be visible from the street because of the, the, the pipes would sit up above that soffit. Okay, and that soffit, any vent color would be the same as the soffit. We would paint that. We would paint that for that to match the building. Correct. All right. All right. Any questions by commissioners? <clears throat> Commissioner Duquette, were you asking a question? No. Okay. Thank you. Um, And no questions from any other commissioners? All right, hearing none, I'd entertain a motion to accept. Well, actually, before I do that, uh, is, is, a, is a vent, no, never, I'll just leave it under hardship. We can, we can discuss that. Uh, application, uh, I'd entertain a motion to accept the application for certificate of hardship at 370 Worthington Street uh, to install well, to, to allow a vent in the in the soffit to be installed so that they can then have air conditioning. Second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we call the vote. Uh, Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Duquette? Yes. Commissioner Finn? Yes. Commissioner Kroll? Yes. Okay, so we've continued that to allow for public commentary to the meeting on the 16th. Ellen, thank you. See you on the thank 16th. You. See on the 16th. Okay, thank you. Okay, we have uh... okay. I do want to ca caution that we have a, a letter for the next item on the agenda 
Okay, so no other public commentary we've missed? No, 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 no previous. No. Okay, so this is, a, this is 86 Magnolia Terrace application for a certificate of non-applicability to repair, to replace, repair the porch rail spindles posts to remedy temporary fix, replace deteriorated wood clapboard siding where needed, no change in design or material. Uh, this letter is this letter from Steve O'Neill. Yes, in, in the letter. Let, let me. All right. Well, let me have the uh, the petitioner um, fixer up properties. Mike Bergdahl, do I see you there? I can't hear you though. You got to unmute yourself. So you can tell us what who else might be speaking on this. Uh, okay. okay. How are you doing? Can you hear me? No, it looks like it sounds like it's breaking up. Yes. No, it looks like it's breaking up. Okay, um, I got you off. Can you hear me now? I can. Go ahead. Let's try. It's still a little distortion, but go ahead. Okay. 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 What do you need to know? Well, just tell us what you're going to do. Uh, basically, we're replacing all of the wood that was right on the driveway side and around the back and replacing, repairing the front spindles in the front that was damaged from the previous owners. Okay. All the same same uh, material? And repainting the house. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Is there any going to be any change in the the, the design or the or the material? Okay. Yes. Okay. What's the what's the change? It says initially your application said no change. No. Like you're breaking up awful much. Um, are you, are you on have a video and a phone going at the same time? Can we can we have you try to, to walk back in maybe? Correct. Can't hear you. I'm sorry. I'll try that now. That was, I still, we still no, don't. Have. Okay. Uh, Let's see if we can. Yeah, we can't. We can't hear you. I'm not sure if you can hear us, but we can't hear you at all. It's just. Is that just better? Call in. Maybe just just call in instead of do the video. That might be something that might work. Yeah, would you like to try to, to get, get yeah. to us up out there? Uh, I get that. Okay. I hope if you turn that the better now. Yeah, just log out yeah. with that call number. Yeah, we got to, we, we've got to uh, have you try to log in on their, maybe use your phone. <laughs> All right. This is maybe if you shut, maybe if you shut your video off. Then okay. the, 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 <clears throat> no. Okay. Now why am I getting it, uh, static? No, oh, is that Bill? Yeah. Okay. I, I can't hear you all. No. Maybe just call. Maybe just just call instead of video. Yeah. 
Mike, yeah. can you just call, call, try call in on one of the phone calls that's listed? Calvin, can you? Oh, he's wondering what, it, it's in the email. Um, What's the number? Calvin, can you mute Toby Cat, please? I don't believe that's Toby Cat. I think I think that's their static, but uh, so, you know, I need to. No, I just wanted to eliminate it as a possibility. Okay. It could be could be mine, but that see now that went away. But they still have to call in. Do we, do we have another number? Hopefully, they have the. Uh, I'll the, I'll call them and give them the information. Okay. Uh, Attorney Shuchuk just gave it to him. So okay. he's on a ball for us tonight. <laughs> um, okay, what do we while we're waiting? Let's see. Okay. All right. Well what we have to I guess we can't really we'll give him a chance to, to come pop back in here. Okay. All right. Well, that's a step in the right direction. Um, I think it might be appropriate if we move to the next. Now the next one. Now let's let's wait another minute. Hey, I see you. Are you there, Mike? Can you hear me? Anybody? I can. I can hear you yeah. a little bit, but it seems to Hello. go ahead. Yep. Hi, Mike. I'm here. Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you guys. Okay, that's good. All right. Okay. So you you're, It says initially said uh, replace repair porch rail spindles posts to remedy it. Uh, temporary fix, no change in design and materials. Now that was removed. So what's going to the change design change be? There's no design change. What we bought it from the bank and the bank put a temporary railing up as pressure treated. So it was a safety thing. So oh, yeah, we're going to remove that back to normal again. Like it was. Okay. Are you, are you going to uh, recreate the uh, original spindles? Yes. Okay. Because uh, that was, so everything else will be the, uh, the material. It, so you're just going to restore it the way the original railing was. Okay. Yes. I like that. Let me just read. We do have one commentary here. Let me just add it in so you can, uh, it says, Dear Commissioners, I live at 80 Magnolia Terrace, next door to 86. Property has been under rehab construction for many months, both inside and outside. The work crews have been scraping, peeling paint on the front porch for weeks. Recently, after scraping the decorative front porch pillars and round spindles, one of the workers started kicking out the spindles. As I watched at first, I thought he was kicking out rotted spindles. However, he continued to kick out uh, all the remaining spindles. Two thirds or three quarters of the porch had sound decorative spindles when they started the project. I now fear the crew will simply replace these with simple square stock, ruining the beauty of the historic home. I also now worry about how they would deal with many decorative windows in the house that need significant repair or replacement. Thank you for attention. Uh, Steve O'Neill, 80 McNall Magnolia Terrace, Springfield, Mass. Uh, all right, that's the first public commentary on what's going on. Uh, Correct. Is it a neighbor I talk to next? Nope, we're losing you again. 
Yeah. Oh, so you so do, you, okay. do you still have some of those Let's spindles? I still have spindles that were taken out of the front and we're getting them redone. Okay, so they're going to be the same. Look. They're, some of them are broke. They're going to be the same. Everything will oh. look the same in the picture that okay. it was. All right. Okay. Perfect. I like that. Okay. Any questions from commissioners? Commissioner Walsh, the uh, application came in under non applicability. I think if he is going to restore to the original character that should fall under a different category. And that should fall under appropriateness. Uh, I'd say that's correct. Okay, why, um, although sometimes I, I, it's a thin line between the two, um, if he's using the same material in recreating exactly, why would it not be under non-applicability? Because he's, he's changing in, in what's already there, which is inappropriate. Uh, because oh, oh I get you. I got you. I got you. Okay. Now, yeah. The, what the bank did for their temporary repair is what was inappropriate. So we have to have this repair put under appropriateness. I get you. Thank you for clarifying yeah. that. Um, Mike, you have no objection to that this gets application gets switched to application of appropriateness. Okay. Uh, is there any? Well, that's all we're dealing with today is uh, porch rails, spindles, and posts. Okay. Uh, any other commissioners have questions of the petitioner? I believe there was also siding. I'm sorry to interject. I know it's siding, clapboard siding, deteriorated. Let me read the whole thing. Replace deteriorated wood clapboard siding where needed, no change in design material. Okay. Um, that sounds like we're doing the thing right, correctly here. Um, I, uh, Commissioner Finn? Yes, I see a photograph in the application uh, dated 8-16-2021 where it appears that the bottom and top rail along with the spindles and what looks to be the start of the railing posts are already in place. So if, if that is going to be replaced uh, and brought back to its original state, is, is all of that going to be removed or, or am I missing something? No, the top, the top rails are staying and the bottom rails are staying. They're still there. This the spindles, the spindles are missing. No, I so, think he's, Mike, I think he's talking about the, the temporary rail that was put in by the bank. Right, that's getting removed until back to original like it was. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Thank yeah, because yep. that was, yeah. But that whole the whole part that the bank did for as a temporary safety measure is going to be removed, and you're going to repair. Okay. Correct. All right. Uh, any other com questions from commissioners? Anything else you'd like to add, Mike? Oh, no. sorry, Commissioner Kroll, go ahead. The only, uh, Mike, the only question I had is we don't we don't have a picture of what the railings are. You're gonna like what you're gonna do. Do we have a picture of what the? We have a picture of the old spindles. Yeah. Yeah. So is that that's going to be what we're going to follow? The picture from Google. Yes. Okay. But I, I just want to be clear on what, you know, when we see it, what should it look like? It's going to look yeah, like we have a picture. We... <clears throat> yeah. Well, we do have a picture for that. Um, so I entertain a motion to uh, continue this application for certificate of appropriateness. There it is. Well, that's different than the picture I'm looking at here. Yeah. That's the 1939 photograph. All right, but one of the pictures I have here has, oh, it does have the, uh, okay, it does have the same post yeah. at the top of the stairs. Okay. Yes. Um, so back to my entertaining, I would entertain an application for certificate of appropriateness at 86 Magnolia Terrace to replace, repair the porch rail spindles post, uh, replace a deteriorated wood clapboard siding where needed, no change in design and material. Uh, so moved. Okay. Second. Okay, is there any discussion on that motion to continue to the to the September 16th meeting? 
hearing none, I'll call the vote. Uh, Commissioner Duquette. Reviewed it though. Commissioner McFarland. Yes. Commissioner Finn. Yes. Commissioner Kroll. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Duquette again. Commissioner Walsh is yes. Well, it passes. It's continued by four to Okay. Um, anyway, we'll see you in two weeks to allow for right. public commentary. Thank you. Have a nice Thank weekend. You too, Mike. Um, yep. Thank you. I, I noted on the, uh, Alvin, just so you know, I noted on the file that there were four yes votes and one question. Okay, thank you. Okay, next is 192 St. James Avenue. This is uh, re replacing, replace porch floorboards. And this is in response to a stop work order and they've submitted an application for a certificate of hardship. Uh, change the floorboards and porch were made due to some, some were broken and unsafe. Um, stop work order. And this is Juan Rodriguez. Is Juan with us? Yes, I'm right here. Oh, there yeah. you are. How you doing? Okay. So can you tell us kind of what 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 happened? <clears throat> so there were some loose boards on the floor and my brother like one of the boards like sunk in and he like bent his foot. So yep. they were basically unsafe. Um I talked to a guy and um to see if he could do the job. He told me yes. I asked him if I needed a permit and he said no because I wasn't changing the construction of it. Huh. So he just went ahead and did the job. Okay. Um, it looks now it's it's pressure treated. I am going. I do want to paint it the same color, and I will paint it the same color. So right now it doesn't look the same, but it will look the same paint and everything. But what what wood did they remove? What kind of wood did he remove? I don't know. Was it a tongue and groove fur? No, it was just it, it was just simple wood, but it was um. The one that's on it now is just a little bit thicker and a little bit wider. Now I have a couple pictures here. Are these before, it, 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 I'm gonna show it to you like this. Is this a picture of it before or after? No, that's after, that looks like after. Okay. Do you have any picture of the floor prior? Um, I believe Alvin has a picture of it. Well, there's one picture here, but you can't see the floor at all. Do you have any picture of the previous floor? It just, it blended in so good that you can't even see it. Okay. All right. So you, what you've done is you've put decking on a floor that would normally have been a tongue and groove for a flooring of some kind. Um, I guess one of the things we'd like to, to determine, how long have you owned the house, Juan? Uh, five years. Okay. To, if we could determine what kind of flooring was there prior to, you know, what you bought it with. Okay, no, um, you can't see it. Because the uh, stairs, it, it's gray. Well, this one, the one picture there, you, it, it, uh, okay. it you just can't see the, the, the differentiation in the floor. And I see that he put, uh, he put some piece of wood there in front of it, kind of to... <clears throat> So you actually can't see that it's it doesn't look as much like decking. But um, any commissioners have questions of the petitioner? No questions. Wow. Um, I, I guess my only question one is: Did you did the, uh, the the question I always ask people, and what should people should ask is: Have you done work in a historic neighborhood? No. Okay. And was, 
Was it, and you had a licensed contractor do this for you who suggested that you didn't need a permit? I believe he's licensed. Um, I, he showed me pictures and he got his own truck. Um, I can find out inf more information about him because I got his number from oh, a friend of mine. Yeah, okay. Because, um, all right, now I see. I got. I had more pictures here I didn't. I had overlooked. So I, I see that because it's very clearly just decking. Um, okay, well. And you're asking for, for under a hardship to, uh... okay. Is there anything else you'd like to add, as you know, from being on with us for a while now that all these have to be continued to the next meeting to allow for public commentary? Um, if you can find, if, I would love to see if you have any pictures that clearly illustrate what material the floor was made of prior to your changing it to this decking. Now, would that, decking he put on there he must have had to do some support work of some kind or was was all the basic no, frame of it was okay yeah it, the frame was okay all he did was just basically take out the top layer and then yep. he just he and just put, put that one, one put that one new i told him if i can paint it he said yes but i gotta give it like at least two months because it's pressure treated yeah well, more than that sometimes okay is there, is there anything else you'd like to add no, that'd be it. Okay. Then I'd entertain a motion to accept the applicant to continue the application for a certificate of hardship at 192 St. James Avenue uh, to change the floorboards. Uh, to, well, to accept the change to the floorboards that were made due to some broken and unsafe. So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, I'm going to call the vote. Commissioner Finn? Yes. Commissioner Kroll? Yes. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Duquette? Any Commissioner Duquette? Okay. Well, Commissioner Walsh is yes. So it's continued. Um, to the 16th and uh, you know if you can if you find pictures that will give us better information forward to Alvin as soon as you can so he can send them out to us okay all right thank you very much all right thank you have a good weekend guys you too Mr. Walsh the next item on the agenda has a couple letters Can okay so which one are we at here we're at Repair stucco side and repoint paint for foundation. Okay. Okay. I see a couple letters here. So this is an application for a certificate of non applicability. Uh, 89 for the JJJ 17 LLC. No changes. Restucco the lower front part of the house. Repair one of the concrete stairs. Repoint the foundation and paint red. Scrape and repaint entire exterior of the house. Repair existing lattice on the porch. Okay. Um, who's here to, to, to speak on this one? I am. Um, just like the, the um, just like you just read, um, that's exactly what we're planning on doing. Okay. All right. So there's a couple letters we have to enter into the record here. So let me do that now. Is there anything else, anything you'd like to tell us about the project? Um, this is no changes, restucco the lower front porch of the house, repairing one of the concrete stairs, repoint foundation and paint red, scrape and repaint the entire exterior of the house, repairing existing lattice on the porch. How long has the lattice on the porch been there? I, to be honest with you, when I got there, there was no lattice there. Okay. I, there's, there's, there has there was just an open area. Okay, so you're you're planning on like recreating what would have what been would, there. Yeah, what what I looked at the neighborhood and see what basically the neighborhood is doing that that was there existing. I try to match it up. Okay, in character okay. of the neighborhood. Okay, there's two um, there's two letters and then and I'm going to enter these two into the 
public record. And then as you've been hearing all along uh, is that uh, we'll continue this to allow any other public commentary. Uh, in. So let me enter the first one. This is, uh, uh, says, please accept this letter as a formal complaint regarding the property in Ferglade Avenue. I reside and own the property 85 Ferglade Avenue. My name is Clara Lee and Jim Sherrard, owner 78, are requesting that the owner said property be made accountable for his lack of consideration on the guidelines set forth by the Springfield Historic Commission. It's my understanding the owners filed a document with the commission stating that the work to be done would not go against any of the guidelines of the historic district. It stated that they were non-applicable based on what work he planned to do. I can attest to the fact that he has violated the rules by tearing out, tearing, I think they mean tearing out the original windows and replaced with windows that were not approved by the commission. The stucco has been taken down from the skirts of the side front porch and replaced with a smooth cement finish butting up the stucco. The lattice has been torn away and replaced with plastic lattice. Each day goes by and work continues with no regards to the rules of the historic district. The rules set forth by the commission are meant for everyone. This is a process for exceptions should they be granted, but the owner of the property at 89 is totally ignored them. Requesting that the work should, being done should have a cease and desist order that the owner be accountable to the commission for the unapproved changes that have been done. Respectively, respectfully Elizabeth Molino, Clara Lee Sherrard, Sh and Jim Sherrard. And also on September 1st, 2021, 89 Ferglade Avenue, please accept this letter as a formal complaint regarding the uh, property 89 Ferglade Avenue, Springfield. I resign. Oh, this is two letters from the same. Well, she signed on the first one. Well, let me enter this one as well. I reside at the and own the property 8385 Ferglade Avenue, requesting that the owner of the subject property be made accountable for lack of consideration of the guidelines set forth by Springfield Historic Commission. When I purchased my home in February of 2010, I received a packet within two weeks of the purchase from the Historic Commission. The packet was informing me of the rules and guidelines that were set for this district west of Forest Park. In the packet, there wasn't a list of homeowners that had to abide by the rules and a list for those who didn't. The rules are meant for all of the home owners of the homes in the district. It's my understanding that after I spoke with planning and owners were approached, they said they had filed on a document with the commission. The application stated the work to be done would, go, would not go against any of the guidelines of the district. All the non applicable boxes were checked based on what they were doing or planned to do. The action of JJJ LLC had proved opposite of the application pertaining to the property. Living next door, I could see they were blatantly disregarding the rules. I've watched as they have replaced historic windows, taking out the original windows and replaced the windows that were not approved by the commission. The original window was thrown in the dumpster, for which pictures were provided to show it. At least a dozen windows had been replaced when the stop order was issued. The window on the second floor was missing. Within a week, the window was replaced with a new one. Stucco had been taken down from the skirts of the side front porch and replaced with smooth cement finish, butting up the stucco. The lattice had been torn away and replaced with plastic lattice that is visible on the street. Each day goes by, work continues with no regard to the rules of the historic district. A work stop order was issued for the property, but work continued on the property disregarding the order. Please help me to understand why a stop order was issued. They were allowed to continue working. I have provided many pictures to planning showing the changes made to the disregard of the rules. Is respectfully, Elizabeth Mullen. Um, is there a stop work order on the summit? Yes, there is a stop work order that is dated. Um, Let's see, August 11th. Okay. And uh, Mr. Heaney, uh, when you purchased the, how long have you owned the property? Um, about a month and a half, maybe okay. two months. Right, when you bought the property, did you know it was subject to historic? I, uh, I did not know, but as soon as I um, got, the, um, got the order, Went to pull my permits, I realized that it was historic and I have filed, followed all of the guidelines. When they say remove the stucco, if you're putting stucco up, you can't put stucco up on a surface that is not good. You have to start from the start of it and put cement up and then go over it and then restucco it. You have to have a solid foundation to put stucco up. So you just don't go throw stucco on something that's not. So yeah, you had to be come, had to be taken down and put up wire and then cement over and then you put stucco on top of cemented wire. All right, so there's a few, there's a few issues here. Let me go to the application first of all, um, because 
the, the application doesn't mention Windows at all here. So let me deal with the application that's in front of me. And the stop work order is, uh, let me read this now. Final last replacement. Okay, the re replacement windows are part of the stop work order, but the application you've submitted is only for the, the stucco lower front of the house, repair one of the concrete stairs, report foundation, repoint foundation and paint, scrape and repaint the entire exterior of the house. Um, is there a way, is in, in back to the stucco, is there a way that the stucco can be made to match the original stucco that was there? It is, that's what I was trying to say is to have stucco match or have the front of the house match, you have to remove the old one that was on the front. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually, Mr. Edie, I'm actually talking about like the, the texture. You know, I'm looking at it and it looks yeah. like it's flat cement to the left and, and not, you know, texture That's, to the right. The one that you see there, that is the start to the process. It hasn't been finished yet. If you, okay. it, All right. yeah. I don't it's, know. I, you know, you, I, I know the basics of it, but I don't know that, you know, that there would be another finished process to it. Okay. Yes, there, there is, there is finished process to it. I did meet Alvin there a couple of times and he went over it with me, what the commissioner would be looking for. And I told him that I will honor what the commissioners will be looking for. Okay. Now, um, did you actually live in the house? No, I did not live in the, the house was, wasn't really livable when I bought it. Okay. Um, let me just ask you one question. I don't want you to name a name or anything, but did you buy it with a real estate agent? Um, yes, I had to buy it from a real estate, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so we're dealing with a few things here. You know, the stucco, if the stucco is, is eventually or ultimately when it's going to match that texture, I mean, I know there's always going to be a scene. It's almost impossible only the best of professionals can match texture without a, a some, uh, you know, visible difference. Uh, wow, you're whipping through some pictures there, Alvin. Yeah, I'm, I'm just showcasing what the, uh, the uh, butter who sent the letter, she sent a bunch of pictures as well. Okay. Um, so your your position right now is that you are, you are going to repair that stucco Yes. And, and Alvin, help me on this one too, because and then a scrape and paint, repoint the foundation. Now painting the is it painting the foundation an issue, Alvin? No, it's well actually it is, uh, only because it's a masonry structure. Right. I'm sorry, well the, the base of the structure is masonry. Any masonry that's painted uh, comes other under the purview of the commission. So if, okay. it, if it was a wood surface, there would, it would fall under non-applicability, but the commission doesn't have any purview. Okay. But any so, any so masonry <laughs> surface, the commission has purview over. All right. So it's just something that has to be put in front of us. That's all. Yes. <clears throat> okay. I got you. <clears throat> Excuse me for a second there. <clears throat> um, so that's really the, in the lattice. The lattice is now is plastic. The lattice, is, the lattice is plastic, and I looked at the other ones that's in the neighborhood, um, and it matches the ones next door. That's why I put that one back yeah. there. Well, yeah, just two things I want to let you know procedurally. Yeah, I'm not necessarily against the lattice. I just that we have to, but it, it unfortunately for the guidelines, it, it doesn't matter what anybody else in the neighborhood has. If somebody has done something without coming before the commission, and I, it, and I don't know, it doesn't mean, you know, that it's okay to do it. And I hate to put it in those terms, but, um, uh, you know, you're, I'm sure you drive around, you're going to find a house or somebody put windows in and didn't come see us. And we, it hasn't made my meeting yet, but right. um, I'm more concerned moving forward. I mean, some of these things, it looks like you would be able to bring uh, this, the porch and the things that you, you're trying to do there within you know, except it would be acceptable. I don't know if it would be non-applicability um, um, relative to any change. Is there any other change? See, there's more stuck. Any other change in there that? Uh... There is There's no change. Everything is going to, like I said, I met with Alvin there maybe two, three times. And okay. he told me that it has 
to match the way that it was. And I, okay. I totally agree with him on what he's saying. I, I knew that. Okay. Yeah. I just haven't, I haven't, I don't know exactly what you guys talked about because on the application, I, I most of that looks like with, you know, reasonable verification that it would be okay. My problem is, uh, is relative to the stop work order because it says that uh, it mentions windows. Did you just remove the historic windows and replace them with what? I did not remove the historic windows when okay. I got the, there is th that's that's this phase that I'm in right now to restock it. You have to get it to that picture they just showed was the concrete, and then then you stucco on top of that. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I just you know because it's already been painted. I thought it, it kind of looked like you were going to leave it that way, but I I understand if that pro if you have to go through one more process, I'm good with that. Yeah, th um, that's so, that's the so, that's the stage before the stucco you know, get, gets on there. That's not the finish work. That's the finish work. Right? Okay. Now tell me about the windows. There was, there was no windows put in by us. We didn't do any windows. She basically will have an ongoing issue with the neighbor next door. Ever well, since we got just, ever since, yeah, I, understand, I understand that. That's why I'm actually just asking you when you bought the house, you've not put any windows in. No, do when I bought the house, it is the way that it is right now. And I did spoke to Alvin that whenever he's ready to come in and have a peek, he can take a peek. Okay. Well, we might have to do that. Um, we very often will do site visits. And um, hold on a sec. So because someone formed a complaint, I had to go um, to the property and assess the situation. Okay. I couldn't tell from my vantage point from the street, I couldn't tell um, if the windows were replaced or not without going onto the property. Yeah. So we should we should arrange a site visit. I think I think that would make sense. Okay. What what's your uh, availability, Mr. Edie, for a site visit on your property? I told um whenever whatever day next week you guys would like to visit, just tell me and I'll I'll meet you guys there. Okay. I uh, do want to add one thing that I am I would like to continue to finish this stucco in the front of the house because I signed a contract to be finished stucco. So I would yep. like to continue doing that. Well, unfortunately, um because you're under the stop work order and because we are required we operate under very, very specific laws and guidelines. We, we're not able to vote to allow you to continue that for two weeks. We have to allow for public commentary. Some of it's been in. Uh, and, and even though I can look at this and, and appreciate that you, hopefully it's gonna end up the way we think it's gonna end up and be a little more matching and appropriately done. We can't take that vote tonight. So, I mean, you can do, you know, I just don't think you should violate the stop work order. That's all. Let me just say it that way. Uh, but we can't override that tonight. We have to have it. We have to allow for public commentary before anything can be, can be done. Um, so uh, next week, anybody available, any commissioners available for a site visit? Say next uh Wednesday. Kevin Walsh, I'm away all week. Otherwise, okay. I would gladly do it. But um, okay. the following week, I could, but not next week. Sorry. Okay. I got availability. Walter? Okay. Yeah, I can how's, how, how's Wednesday for you? Prince Spaghetti Day. It's good for me. Okay. It's good for you. What time? Now, I should be speaking to the petitioner here. What uh, time on Wednesday? What time would be good for you Wednesday? Whatever is good for you, I'll I'll I'll, I'll make it work for me. Just okay, as long as late in the evenings. No, no, it'd be morning, hopefully, like eleven a.m. That sound eleven next Wednesday is fine. Okay, so uh, I both myself and uh, Commissioner Walsh and Commissioner Kroll will will stop in, in Alvin. Hopefully, will we be able to be there? Yep, I'll be there. 
for a site visit on Wednesday at 11 a.m. Okay, so I'd entertain a motion to continue this application for certificate of non applicability to the September 16th meeting. So moved. Thank you. Okay, is there a second on that? A second. Okay, any discussion on it? Hold on one sec here. I'm losing my, <laughs> losing my file. Okay, hearing none. Uh, let me get the vote. Commissioner Kroll? Yes. Commissioner Finn? Yes. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Duquette? Commissioner Walsh is yes. So we'll see you on this Wednesday at 11. Okay, I'll see you then. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's see what we have next here. Okay, this now we're into the historical review of city owned. Okay, 220 State Street, Springfield Central Library, installation of light fixtures. This is an application of some municipal protocols. Request permission to install architectural lighting on the building facade. Okay, who's speaking? Uh, Chris Russell, uh, Richard Lyon is also on the call uh, representing the ownership, uh, the uh, museums. Um, the project uh, we sent over, Alvin, you've shared the, uh, where the lights, the cut sheets for the LED architectural lights as well as their locations with the commission? Yes, the, each commission member should have that in their packet. Yep. Uh, included alongside of that will be a conduit uh, that will provide power to those lights. That conduit uh, will be painted the same color as the marble facade, and it's actually hidden from uh, pedestrian or street view uh, because there's a, a approximately a 10 to 12 inch ledge just below all of the windows. If you're looking at the photo mm -hmm. of the installation. So the only thing you will see from the street or the sidewalk would be the LED lights. So, okay. Yeah, I got uh, that rendering. I see that. Yeah, and, and we've uh, yeah we've done these lights uh, now uh, probably two dozen buildings throughout throughout the city, um, and the city approached us uh, because there was some funding available to help us. Uh, do this it's a it's as you guys all know it's a gorgeous building and uh it's just can really highlight the architectural value of it okay any commissioners have any questions alvin just clarify what we have to what our um so again, it's whether or not it's an adverse impact or not. Yeah. And if, it, if you feel that it is an adverse impact, um, I guess I would recommend what they can do to okay. um, minimize the impact. Okay. Is it subject to public hearing? No, it's not. So you guys can vote on it tonight. Okay. Thank you. Thought so. Just clarifying it. Uh, keep me straight in line here. Um, any commissioners have questions? Hearing none, uh, um, I'd entertain a motion. I, I, I believe it's, it's uh, I have no problem with it. Any other commissioners? Nope. I mean, with the conduit pretty much hidden, I mean, you'll, it looks like you might see just little bits of the tops of the lights along the, along the rail, not rail, but uh, uh, ledge. Yes. And, um, I don't, I don't think it has, what were the words you used, Alan? <laughs> Alvin, I mean, Alvin. Ooh. Ooh. Ad, ad, adverse impact. Adverse adverse impact. impact. I would entertain a motion that this project has no adverse impact at 220 State Street, 
the installation of light fixture of the building facade. So moved. Second. Okay, is there any discussion on that motion? Hearing none, let me call the vote. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Finn? Yes. Commissioner Kroll? Yes. Commissioner McDuquette? Commissioner Walsh is yes. Um, okay. Thank you, gentlemen. No, thank you. Thank you. That, that building could really look nice with those. It's going to look gorgeous. Yeah. We're excited about it. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, what do we have next here? We have that's that one. Okay, so now we have other matters. The 222 State Street, George Walter Vincent Smith Art Museum asking to, to uh, let me see, uh, amendment to, to city ordinance removing the, the, the exempt status. So the request is to remove the exempt status from the quadrangle to local historic district. So, uh, looks like the museum gentlemen uh, jumped off the call, but again, they did send in a letter all right, the Springfield Museum received a grant from the CPA. The CPA requires that the exterior of historic buildings that are assisted in CPA funds be permanently protected. Although the Walter George Walter Vincent Smith Art Museum is within the boundary of the Quadrangle Mattoon Street Local Historic District, the 1972 ordinance which created the district exempted from control any properties owned by the Springfield Museums. We are requesting that you remove that exemption as it pertains to the George Walter Vincent Smith Art Museum. Thank you in advance for your assistance with this matter. Uh, Bernard Spirito, CFO, Springfield Museums Corporation. Um, that sounds fairly cut and dry, but is this subject to public hearing? It, it's not only because they're already in the in the district. So yeah, um, I just, it's just. This would be just you guys recommending it to go to city council for, for their vote. Okay. To, to, uh, basically, up, uh, change the lang language of the ordinance. Okay. So I would entertain a motion to, um, to remove the exempt status from the Quadrangle Mattoon local from the George Walter Vincent Smith Art Museum located in the Quadrangle Mattoon Local Historic District. No, no. <laughs> okay, thanks. A second? A second. Okay, thank you. Uh, any discussion on the motion? I, uh, I do have a question. Yes. So they obviously filed for an exemption for a reason. And now because they have access to CPA funds, they'd like to change that language. My question is, can they come back to us at some point in the future and ask for another exemption? I would imagine that Attorney Shuchuk could answer that, but I think I can too. Yeah, they can come and, and probably ask for it, but uh, they will have asked, they have requested this to be done. So I couldn't imagine that I would vote to undo it since it's their request. Um, yeah, I just want to make sure it's not a matter of convenience. Hey, I've got funds, so let's change the language, but I really didn't want this to be, you know, our status. No, in the I, beginning. I agree. I thought the same yeah. thing. And then I, but I realized that they, that might be, they might believe that there's a better access for funding to eliminate the exemption over time. Um, and that's going to be their gamble. So, uh, the, the, um, this did come before the commission last year for another uh, uh, structure uh, owned by the museum. The, the Springfield Science Museum did come before you guys and you right. guys, um, allowed um, the Science Museum to move forward to city council and city council voted to remove the, the exemption. Right. Um, I would imagine that, you know, in the future that I'm not sure that the commission would want to remove, um, I'm sorry, to, to reapply, reinstate um, you know, exemption for, for these structures. So I think once it, once they are removed, I don't, I don't believe 
Right. And I, I don't believe because it has to go to city council anyways. So we couldn't do yes. it. We could only then once again recommend that the city council reconsider it. Um, I don't have a problem what they're asking for. It's when someone's asking for a greater historic protection, it's okay with me. Um, and our, we're, we've already had the motion and seconded, right? Or did I just imagine am I losing my mind? No, nope, okay. we did. We're in discussion. So before we call a vote, I just want to suggest something. If you if you noticed, I've called the vote differently tonight, slightly. I had been kind of rotating in the past, but it was suggested to me today that I'm I have to I am supposed to vote last. That's why I was doing that. You know, in, in other ones I had alternated. It's so no one particular commissioner would be, especially if it's something contentious, it would be any pr pressure on any particular commissioner. That's why I was just changing the order of the vote when I called it which I still did tonight, but it was suggested, and I'm gonna look into it at some time to see what the requirements are, uh, but I was not aware of that, but it, it was brought to my attention. So until I clear it up, I'll vote last. <laughs> that's why that's changed. Um, and um, so let me call the vote on this. So this is to send it to the city council. Quick question before you do anything. Um, <laughs> Attorney Shuchuk, is there any issues um, with Commissioner Finn's representation on the Community Preservation Committee in, in, in making a decision tonight. I, I mean, I, I don't think so, but I can look into it further. If that's, um, but I, I, I don't, I don't believe so. Well, then we would hit. We don't without his vote today. Yeah, then we're then yeah. we probably should continue. Uh, yeah. Commissioner Duquette, are you still with us? Let me see. Um, let me see I mean, if I can still there. I just can you unmute him? And I don't. Know. I can't unmute him. He has to <laughs> unmute himself. I can request. I can ask him to unmute, but okay. Uh, let me just call him. You know, give him a buzz. I can be unbiased. Sure, you can. That is not, not a question in my mind. But we still have to better to air. Yeah towards the towards the you know eliminate potential bias so so can, can you repeat the, the questions that i can look into it's just if um commissioner finn can vote on or or, or, or if he should recuse himself is yeah that that's all it is basically yeah. okay all right yeah i'll um get back to you okay From Walter, Bill, are you there? We are here. We are here. We are here. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? <laughs> That's right. Walter, can you just dial in from another computer so there are two of you? <laughs> That'll solve the problem. Hell yeah. Not a problem. Okay. So, uh, Commissioner Duquette does not know how to unmute himself, so he's going to remove mm -hmm. himself from the meeting and he's going to re enter the meeting. Okay. So I have three votes that they were all votes to continue. So you'll see on the file that I said four yes and one question mark on all three of them. Um, so we don't have to re-vote in the continuation cases. I'm sure he might've been hearing me, but. And then, uh, and then Alvin, if you can look into the, re, not the reorganization, but the restatement of, uh, of uh, the commission for the next meeting to whether it's September, or October, I can't remember. You know, it might be October. Just send me an email. But if it's not, put it on the next agenda, I guess is what I'm saying. Okay. Yep, nope. something changed. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. He's able to log off. Yeah.
Okay. We're still here. Well, we'll give him another minute or two. Now, is there going to be, is there any Is there a time frame on this vote, Elvin? If we can't vote today? The only issue, is, well, there's no time frame, but uh, I was hoping to get it onto the September 13th um, uh, city council agenda. So if okay. you guys don't vote on it um, tonight, then we have to wait until October. Is it, would you be able to get it on there anyway? Don't they need to have a longer time? I mean, shouldn't their agenda be set already? No, no, I can. Um, when, when's the meeting? September thirteenth. Oh yeah, you definitely have enough time. It's only the second. Yeah, I don't know how they. I figured they were really on a short leash there. Yeah, it's usually the like. I think it's what is it? Five days before Alvin has to be in, or yeah, the, Wednesday, the Wednesday, the Wednesday, yeah, the, the Wednesday before the meeting. Yeah. So whatever that how many days that is. <laughs> yeah, next week Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. Let me. I'm going to change the dynamics here for a second. Commissioner Finn, do you believe that you should recuse? Yeah, so what? No. Attorney Shutak, were you going to say? Um, no, I'm saying what, what re, why, why would you need to recuse yourself? I'm, I'm sorry. Or why do you think you need yeah. to? The, the, the funds have already been approved. Um, so it's it's really a non-issue, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I just so wanted the, Commissioner yeah. Finn, I just wanted you to say that you didn't feel yeah. you had to recuse, and that yeah. way okay. I, yeah. I don't. I don't. I mean, yeah. if we had the other vote, we would just we'd be fine either yeah. way. And I just didn't want to continue to another meeting, so um, I we, we've already got the motion and the second and the discussion, yeah. and so let me just call the vote on this one, Commissioner Kroll. Yes. Commissioner Finn. Yes. Commissioner McFarland. Yes. Commissioner Duquette. Nothing yet. And Commissioner Walsh is yes. Okay. I just needed you to tell me that. I think we're fine as well. Yeah. Um, All right. So again, that's just a recommendation to send it to city council. To send it to, uh, the recommendation yeah. to send it to city council. Yep. Yeah. And they make the decision anyways. Um, and now my favorite motion of the day. To adjourn. Nobody wants the motion to adjourn. Oh, I'm sorry. So yeah, motion to adjourn. <laughs> motion to adjourn. All in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks, guys. Appreciate Aye, everybody. it.